name is Felice Frankel. I'm a research scientist in the Center for Material Science and Engineering at MIT. Basically what I do is work with scientists and engineers around the whole institute and try to raise a level of their visuals and their data and all sorts of approaches to visually communicating their work, their research. Mostly for journal submissions and for presentations, but it's really, and this is, this is a harder point for people to understand except when you're doing it. The idea behind all this is when you think about how to visually express your research, you're not only communicating your data to other people, but you're in fact clarifying it in your own mind. So it, it's like writing an article. You, you have to figure out what should you say first, and our vocabulary is more visual, and, and, and fashion a, an image in a, in a way that a new viewer, that is the first time viewer, will understand what your work is about. We started a very exciting program here at MIT in 2001, which was funded by National Science Foundation, called Image and Meaning, where we invited researchers from all over the world and all disciplines to talk about how they portray or depict science and engineering. The idea behind it is that the challenges, no matter if you're an astronomer or working in nanotechnology, the challenges are actually quite similar in, in terms of how to express a particular idea or data. How do you use color? How do you compose a figure? All of these might seem very disparate depending upon the discipline, but the challenges are very much universal. With the image and meaning um, efforts, we, we, ha we started with three days of gathering people all over the place. It was quite remarkable, and the food was very important, by the way. And one evening, for example, we had uh, E.O. Wilson, Susan Sontag, um, Roger Penrose, and Alan Lightman was the moderator. And we had images in the back of the, on the stage of images in science. And the subject was how images in science have changed the way we see ourselves. It was quite remarkable. So this was the beginning of something that we, we brought, we expanded on the campus, where we have people gathering together and looking at each other's visuals. And, and uh, I think we started a conversation moving. I think we started getting people who don't usually talk to each other from various disciplines to talk to each other. And basically, it is about how to represent uh, their work and how to communicate it. But just as important, as I mentioned, it is this notion of when you think about how to visually represent your work, you are clarifying it in your own mind. So jump ahead 20 years, and we still are doing the same thing, a little more focused. Uh, we're conducting master classes in a number of departments. And again, it is this collaborative idea that when you sit down a, a, a few scientists from various disciplines and get them to talk to each other, it's, in a way it's a means of they're learning how to communicate with the non-expert, for example. When you develop a visual vocabulary that is accessible to the non-expert, it could be very powerful. And you know, we, we get covers of journals, and which brings attention to research. That's what a lot of this is about, bringing attention and making an accessible language to comprehend what exactly is going on in the research. The biggest mistake that most researchers make is they just put too much in their pictures. You want to show that you've done the research, so you want to show all the data, but by showing all of it, you're basically not communi communicating any of it. They also, they don't put themselves in the position of the first time viewer. It's really an issue of trying to understand that 
not everybody is going to see what you want them to see. It really is the biggest issue in, in, that, I, that I'm seeing around campus. When we have our master classes, what we do is we, we announce that we're having a master class and they have to send me the figures that they're working on, which I can, I'll, I take a look at and then eventually we discuss it in groups. So I say to them, very simply, what is the first thing you want me to see? And interestingly, it's not so easy to come up with that answer. It, it's a very easy idea, but if you cannot figure out what is the first thing you want me to see, you're in trouble.